Is America exceptional? I'm Anne Marie. I'm Janique. I'm Vicky. We're going to discuss American exceptionalism with Alfonso, Rachel, and Bill Whittle on this episode of Politics. Our Politi dude, Bill Whittle, is many things. He's an author, a screenwriter, an editor, and a pilot, but more than anything, he's a freedom fighter. As a regular commentator at PJTV, combined with his Afterburner, Trifecta, and Firewall videos, Bill is viewed by millions of people. In all of his videos and essays, commentator Bill Whittle takes us to new levels in his exploration of Tea Party conservatism, from small government and distrust of elitism, to gun rights and immigration, to hardworking Americans and occupier crybabies. Bill reveals the foundation of what makes America the most exceptional nation in the history of the world. There you go. Well, well dang. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm, Good to be here. Day, See you later. <laughs> are we an exceptional nation? Why are we so ashamed to say we're the best? We're well, not allowed to say that anymore. Most of us aren't ashamed to say it. The president well, I'm not. is. Well, yeah. uh, exactly. You know, Barack Obama was asked famously if he thought America was, if he believed in American exceptionalism, and he said, "Yeah, I believe in American exceptionalism the way the Greeks believe in Greek exceptionalism yeah. and the Brits believe in British exceptionalism." which is a typical mealy mouth way to say, no, of course I don't believe it. But he's, what's the term I'm looking for? Wrong. Right. <laughs> he's wrong, and he's wrong, he's clearly wrong. And, and you know, I could, I could do 15 minutes on this, but to give you like a, a quick, concise Which you can see on Firewall, <laughs> on, on Bill's video. These are amazing. Your, your sti these are Firewall. Well, They're great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. You could look at, uh, you can look at, uh, metrics for how you might describe mm -hmm. countries being exceptional and and I, I decided to look at it four ways you can look at it militarily uh, economically scientifically and culturally uh, militarily the United States is unparalleled there's never been a country that had the kind of military dominance that we have today and time and time and time again the military American military goes out into the world defends freedom and then comes home people say everything we do is a war for oil in 1991 we had the United States Army on the Kuwaiti oil fields that were on fire Saddam had gone back to Iraq we sat on the precious, precious oil fields, we put out the fires, and then we came home. So militarily, the United States dominates the world in a way that has never been dominated in history ever by one mm. country. Uh, economically, it's real simple. We have uh, one quarter of China's population, and we produce four times their GDP. 5% of the world's population produces 26% of all the world's economic output. Economically, the United States is the engine of prosperity that has made China rich and India rich and all of these things. They're American, it's American economic models that made this happen, freedom and prosperity. Uh, scientifically, it's really interesting because uh, the, every year you publish uh, scientific research papers and they have little citations of science. We discovered something, that's a citation. And in 10 years, uh, the second most scientific country, Great Britain, came up with about 880,000 scientific citations in a 10-year period. And during that 10-year period, the United States produced 27,936,432. The United States, wow. produced, the United States <laughs> produces more science wow. than the next six countries combined. Wow, that's and, unbelievable. Yeah, it is unbelievable. And culturally, wow. finally, culturally, you'll appreciate this, Victoria, you've been in show yeah. business, and, and all of us. Of the 100 top grossing movies in the world, I'm not talking about U.S. gross, of the 100 top grossing movies in the world, what percentage do you think comes from American studios? 99%? Wow. No, it's 100%. Wow. Wow. Every wow. single one of the 100 top grossing movies in the world is made by an American studio and it's spoken in English. So militarily, economically, scientifically, and culturally. And charity wise. Yeah, yeah that's right. Americans give. Absolutely. People talk about American government being stingy, but the American people. people yeah. Yeah, it is without question in every one of these four categories the most exceptional country in the history of the world. And it says a lot about Barack Obama that he can't admit that. Because it's painfully obvious to anyone who wants to look at it. And when he says he believes in American exceptionalism the same way people believe in Greek exceptionalism or the Brits believe in British exceptionalism, let me just say this. If, if I was a Greek citizen, I would want my prime minister to say, do you believe in Greek exceptionalism? Yes, I think the Greeks are the greatest people in the world. Right. And if I'm a British prime minister, I want the British prime minister to say to his people, Great Britain is a source of civilization across the world. We have been the sure. light of the world. The president of the United States is ashamed to be an American, and everybody knows it. Well, let me ask you this, though. Why, though? Well, because he's, look, because he's from Indonesia. I, I would think that, you know, th I think there needs to be a separation of talking about mm -hmm. uh, this being an exceptional nation because people take that as people. We're not saying that our people 
are better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to say like here in America, oh, yeah. it's, it's well, hold, hold I think we're pretty uh, in the cool. sense, in the sense like that we said we're not morally better. We don't exist. That, that's correct. Yes, that's right. We're not made out of a different cloth. Than well, everybody. I say in the yeah. sense of you know, it's like look here in America, we're not better than everybody else. We are everybody else. That's exactly. You know, that's right. what America yeah. is. That's, yeah. You know, but you know, we're not saying that hey, our people are better than our your superior. people. But our result, it's not about exactly. Superiority. But our, in terms of, of our results, and what do you attribute and, our superiority to? Our freedom, our God-given right. freedom that's protected by our Constitution. Right. We're allowed to explore what makes us great. And we are also a nation of, uh, of risk takers. By definition, we are, we, are, we are people that have been selected over the course of our entire history to be risk takers and to be ambitious and to be the kind of people that don't tolerate oppression. Mm. Uh, the history of America is the history of people who have come from Madagascar, Eastern Europe, South America, China, wherever. Mm -hmm. and, and of all of those people that are being oppressed in that population, only sure. small numbers of them are ready to give up everything they have and get on a boat and go somewhere else and take a chance to be new people. Mm -hmm. And we, we're self-selected in that way. I think it's our Judeo-Christian heritage because if you base your life on the Ten Commandments and you try to live up to them, mm -hmm. I, I just think uh, morally, you need uh, high morals to, I, you might disagree, you can disagree. But uh, the Bible says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. And uh, the people, the pilgrims, the, our founding fathers, they had that mentality, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might, and for the glory of God. And they had this, uh, this thing where they wanted to do their best for him, you know, not just for money or fame or glory. And I think that's one of the reasons uh, our country was exceptional. Well, I think that's what he was saying when you said the God-given rights. Well, he, he did. Freedom. He said, but you know, because of our God-given rights, which you're right, they're inalienable rights. Well, our but I guess, I'm sorry. I was yeah, say, no. our, our founders, mm -hmm. they knew about that. I mean, they wrote it in our founding documents Absolutely. and appealing to the supreme judge of the world. They knew who they were accountable to. Right. So it's, yeah, I, I totally wholeheartedly agree. Yes, because the freedom we do have, it does come from God. Now, mm -hmm. I guess my other question then is, in relation to the freedom and liberty is, mm -hmm. what is the threat to American exceptionalism? Uh, feeling guilty about it, you know, it's, yeah. and, and once again, and, and feeling guilty about it comes about of self-righteousness. And this is, you know, it's when, when you have this plague of self-righteousness that's in America and basically all over the world, you will have a problem with, with talking about American exceptionalism because you think that you're being, well, I'll just say that you think that you're being all that and you don't want anybody exactly. else to talk crap about you for doing so. so. <laughs> they, they used to teach patriotism when I was a little kid. We learned the pledge, we stood up every single one of us. They don't teach that in schools anymore. Uh, There's no patriotism yeah, it's whatsoever. Taught, it's, it's, it's suppressed, and it has to right. be suppressed. Uh, the thing that the, the why thing does it have to be? Yeah. What because, do you mean? Well, you mean you it, can't, they have to look? Yeah. If you really get into the history of, of how the left has operated and what they've done to this country over 40 or 50 years, you have to understand that that, that the entire philosophy of what they're doing is predicated on two different things. They have a sword, which they call critical theory, and they have a shield, which they call political correctness. Critical mm -hmm. theory says that. These people that tried to destroy America understood that you could not destroy a country that was a unified group of new people who had come to this country to become new people together. Mm -hmm. My grandfather came here from England. If I'm standing next to somebody whose grandfather came here from Mexico, my grandfather and his grandfather have more in common with each other than they do with the English people and the Mexican people they left behind. Mm -hmm. They have come to America to become new people together. That has to be destroyed. And so critical theory is the idea that we're going to divide America up into a series of tribes and launch these tribes constantly at war, not against each other, against the middle. Against, against the traditional idea of America. So we tell black people that this is a uniquely racist country, we tell homosexuals it's a uniquely homophobic country, we tell women it's a uniquely patriarchal country, and everybody attacked the middle, and that's what critical theory does. And political correctness is the idea that uh, that certain arguments, certain responses are off the table. You can't even discuss don't them. Don't question yeah, it. We don't have to listen yeah. to you because you're a racist, so you can just mm -hmm. shut up right yeah. now. Right. Wow. In fact, we're not even going to let to hear you talk. So if I start criticizing Barack Obama's out of control spending, people say you're a racist, you don't have to listen to me, and this is how political correctness works. It is a shield to get one side to shut up. Well, it's yeah. very intolerant is what it is. that is. But why does the left want to destroy America? Besides Agenda 21 and globalism in the UN, why did the left want to destroy America? The short form is America is, is a bastion of individual freedom, individual responsibility, and free market capitalism. These ideas are repugnant to people who want to control large masses of people because large groups of free people cannot be controlled. If you get into what the left has in common, these people are always telling other people what to do. The, it can, 
the, uh, the Green Movement is about telling people what to do. The uh, Entitlement State is about telling wow. people what to do. It's all about telling people what to do. And you can't do You're that right. to free, independent people who have their own sense of wealth and their own rights. Wow. We can go on and on about <laughs> on this subject. This is, we are an exceptional nation. I don't oh care what boy. anyone says, <laughs> that's it. We've proven it throughout history. And that's it for today. And thank you so much to Alfonso and Bill Whittle. And we will see you next time on PolitiChicks, the right PC. Mm -hmm.